Here you go. Just one minute. Huh? One minute. We've lost the dog. Presenter, are you ready? Ready. Authors, are you ready? Ready. 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 If you've got your pencils and paper ready, let the countdown begin. Ten, nine, eight. Hello world! Thank you for tuning in from your classrooms and welcome to our new home. Today we're celebrating the fun and magic of reading. You'll hear from astonishing authors and draw along with illustrator Tony Ross. And in just 30 minutes you'll know exactly how to discover a book you will love. Remember, you can see your school shout outs right here by tweeting at Puffin Books using the hashtag Magical Authors. Let's get things started. For our first trick, Nick Muhammad, the youngest ever member of the Bradford Magic Circle, before he grew up, is about to read your minds. Please, focus your minds on the screen. Let's begin. Hello, my name is Nick Muhammad, and I'm the author of The Young Magicians and the Thieves' Almanac and welcome to the Magical Authors Show. So, I thought I would do a quick trick to start off with all of you in the classroom. So I'd like somebody on this side of the classroom, I'd like you to think, you don't have to say it out loud or write it down, I just want you to think of a number between one and ten. Somebody on that side of the classroom or a few of you if you'd like. I'd like somebody in the middle of the room to think of a vegetable, so something like an onion, it doesn't have to be an onion, uh, I want you to think of a, a simple vegetable and somebody on this side of the classroom I'd like you to think of two simple shapes so something like a square but not a square uh, think of two simple shapes and I want you to picture them in your mind one inside of the other so two simple shapes one inside the other now person on this side of the room I think that you're thinking of the number seven is that right? I hope I got that right. I think the person who's thinking of a vegetable, I think you're thinking of a carrot. I hope I got that right. And the person on this side of the room who's thinking of two shapes, I think you're thinking of a triangle inside a circle. Anyway, I hope that worked and uh, I look forward to seeing you very shortly. He's so awesome. You can look forward to more magic from Nick later. Before that though, I'm utterly charmed to be joined by our next magical author. She's presenting this year's Winter Olympics and Paralympics, has enchanted readers with her racehorse books and is one of this year's World Book Day authors. Please welcome into your classrooms, the fabulous Claire Balding. Thank you. Right, Claire, I'm going straight in there. What is it that you love about reading? I like the fact that it lets us all escape into another world, don't you? When you pick up a book and you read it, you're, you're investing a lot of time in it. You're spending hours reading it and you might go somewhere really private to read it. You might read it in your bedroom, you might take it out outside and read it in a little cubbyhole. And it's your world because your imagination is fired up by what you're reading. So I like that. I like the escapism of it. It's its own little form of magic. Yes. And you've travelled the world, haven't you? Mm. Where's the most unusual place you read a book? I would say either on an island in Samoa in the South Pacific, at the end of a beach, there was nobody else there, in a sort of shack that was a bar, but it was a shack with surfboards hanging down outside, looking out to the sea, sitting there reading a book, or on a ship going into Auckland, New Zealand. That was pretty cool. Wow, those are exotic. You're just showing off now. <laughs> now, you might have noticed you're sitting next to a TV screen, but this isn't any TV screen. No, this is our curious new toy. It's called Wurzel, and it's got all the questions that you guys have sent in inside. So, Claire, if you'd like to be the very first person. Oh, magic button. Yes, press the button. <laughs> if you could be a character from one of your books, who would you be and why? That's from Bar Mullock Primary School in Scotland. Oh, that's a good question. I'd probably be Percy the Pony, who's in the racehorse who wouldn't gallop and the racehorse who disappeared, because he's really, really naughty. And he's really greedy. And he's a little bit vicious, actually. But I think I'd probably choose to be one of the animals rather than a human being. Because like, if I can choose any character, what's the point of being another human being? Doesn't he I fart a lot as well? He he does, Ed, yes. 
<laughs> in very inappropriate times and places yeah. and in front of the Queen and all sorts of things, yes. Oh, so basically you just want an excuse to fart in front of the <laughs> Queen. <laughs> right, I see, I see. I just want an excuse to be really naughty, that's what I want. Well, I think we've got time for one more. OK. Come on, Wurzel, come on. Is there a specific activity that you do that sparks your ideas for your books? That's from St Ignatius Catholic School in the Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands? How come we didn't get to go there? To go meet them? Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's very the... exotic, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, very. Uh, I walk. I walk a lot. And that's... I walk my dog, Archie. And that's when I do most of my thinking. And I'll try and think as a character would think. So if I'm thinking like Charlie, I, I, like Charlie Bass, I want to be making I sort of think about the decisions she would make or if I'm thinking like the girl who thought she was a dog you know if you think you are a dog how do you react to things how do you respond and I look at other people's dogs as well because you know they behave differently to Archie. So almost a bit like acting. Yeah. You yeah. act it out. Yeah right? exactly you act it out and you think what would be logical and then what would be funny and how can we try and do something that follows the plot but also is just really funny and stupid. What a great idea maybe you can try that too. Marvellous magician Nick Mohammed is back to answer your questions and I think he's just getting ready for his next show. Excuse us, Nick, can we ask you a few questions? Of course you can, yeah. What are you doing? Currently I'm rehearsing for a magic show. What does it take to become a magician? Well, anybody. Anybody at all can become a magician. Mostly it takes lots of practice, though. You're the author of The Young Magicians. What's your book about? Well, The Young Magicians is about four young magicians who go on to help Scotland Yard solve a series of impossible crimes. Can you tell us more about your characters in The Young Magicians? I can indeed, yeah. So there is Zach, who uses um, lots of sleight of hand in his magic. There is uh, his best friend, uh, Johnny, who likes to combine sort of science uh, with his magic as well. There is Alex, who is a bit of a, a wizard with uh, playing cards, unlike me. And uh, there is also Sophie, who uses lots of uh, mentalism and hypnotism in her magic as well. Nick, true or false, only magicians are allowed to have bunny rabbits in Queensland, Australia. Oh gosh, I would say that that is false. It's true. Is it true? Wow, I did not know that. What do you love about reading? Oh gosh, I love that you can just curl up in a ball somewhere with a good book and just completely escape and let your imag imagination run wild. Uh, usually accompanied by a large sort of glass of squash or something like that, that's what I like to do. What do you do if you get writer's block? Uh, I tend to go for a jog if I get writer's block. What was your favourite lesson at school? Uh, drama and also science as well. I'm a big fan of science. Can you show us a magic trick? I can indeed, yes. Um, I have got a coin here. Um, I'm just going to cover it with this handkerchief. And I'm going to count to three. I'm going to go one, two, three. And you see that the coin has gone. What's the weirdest thing you've ever pulled out of a hat? Uh, another hat. Can you do another magic trick? I can indeed. What an irritatingly talented guy. You buddy magicians out there can find out more about life in the magic circle in Nick's books. But now on to a different type of magic, when words and pictures come together. Tremendous things can happen. You'll certainly recognise our next guest pictures. He's illustrated Horrid Henry and covers for David Walliams and Claire Balding. Please put your hands together for Tony Ross. My dad was in the magic circle. Was he now? He was a conjurer. And you're a magician in your own way, aren't you? I am not in the magic circle. <laughs> no, with all your lovely pictures. So have you always illustrated children's books? Uh, not when I was a little baby or a toddler, but when I went to art school and left art school, then I had to do something. You, can't, you leave art school, you can't do anything really. You can't build bridges, you can't lay bricks, you can't, can't do anything except draw. So you've got to find some way of learning to get a living out of drawing. And the only way I could think of it was books. So, Tony, have you got any tricks for people who are watching and want to practice their drawing? Yeah. You draw better if you understand what it is you're drawing. Hands, for instance. A lot of people think hands are difficult. They're not. They're really very easy. What you don't know about hands is you never really understood them, never looked at them. For instance, if I'm drawing a hand, there's a point about there, which is very important, because from that point, all the fingers, you see, radiate exactly from that point. See what I mean? 
And even the thumb, which shouldn't really be there at all, because the thumb isn't part of these, the thumb is part of that. So we get a hand, the back of a hand like that. That's this, that bit, huh? Okay, there. That point is that point there, which is useful because all the fingers radiate from it. Like that. And the thumb does as well, but down there, halfway down. So the thumb comes out there. You can see a hand. It's dead easy. Well, thanks, Tony. You taught me a couple of things there. It's almost time to draw along, and I know Claire's here to join us. Psst, so psst, psst. Oh. Oh, OK. Uh, over to Puffin reporter Mahela, who's going to get the scoop on Claire's World Book Day plans. Thanks, Ed. Right, everyone. Now I'm going to talk about Claire Balding and the magical process of writing a book. We asked Claire to bring along a few special objects in our story satchel. So, Claire, what's inside? Let's have a look. Well, first of all, we have a copy of Black Beauty. This was my absolute favourite book as a child. And it's all written with the horse as the narrator. And Anna Sewell wrote it, and it was the only book she ever wrote in her life. And all the profits went to the RSPCA, which had just been established. I love that book. Are horses your favourite animal? Well, I yes, I do love horses, but they're quite difficult to have living in the house with you. So dogs would be, I think, at the top of my list. What's your World Book Day book about? Well, it's about a girl who thinks she's a dog. And it's called The Girl Who Thought She Was a Dog. And my little girl who's called Fennel is born into a family that have a dog. And she wants to be, the dog is her best friend, and she wants to do everything, the dog called Twiglet, everything the dog does. Woof. Did you have a dog when you were little too? Woof. I did, yes. I was always surrounded by dogs, actually. We had lurchers and we had boxers. And I do love a boxer. They've got really, really soft cheeks and they've got really soft ears and they've got lots of wrinkles around their mouth. And they <sighs> think they're human. I've got other things here you might be interested in. I've got sausages. Sounds great. I managed, yes, right, clearly. Um, those are my sausages, my sausage, and leave, thank you. Um, I once shot a sausage at the Queen across the breakfast table. I know, it's a very strange thing. The Queen's very keen on dogs. She's got corgis, and she's got doggies as well, which are a cross between a dachshund and a corgi. <laughs> I have to say, Mahela, thank you. That is the most interesting interview I've, I've ever done. Roll next VT. Hey, my name is Zach King, and I'm the author of Zach King, My Magical Life and The Magical Mix-Up. So as a magician, a lot of people ask me, how do you do your tricks? So I'm going to show you a quick video, and then I'll explain how I did this magic trick. Touches. All right, here we go. OK, this is all I need. Are you ready? This is my brand new book, and it's magical. This is a fun trick, because you guys could actually try this at home. It involves you printing a picture of something. So I printed a picture of the book on a piece of paper, and then I flick it downwards, and I freeze, and someone comes in, and puts the real book in my hands and takes away the paper and then ta-da, it's real and just splice out the time in between the cuts.
Well, that was something you can do after the show. Here's something you can do right now. Tony's going to teach us how to draw a dog. Wow. Well, um, I, I start off with the eyes. So I put two big black dots there, like that. And then if you put the black nose in about there, uh -huh. you've basically got a dog. So then you what? put the hair on like this. Put the hair over the eyes, going down, and round the nose, down there. Oh, yeah. Like that. And you've got a hairy dog. Is that what, what particular dog have you got there, Tony? Yorkshire Terrier? I didn't know there were different sorts of dogs. I thought <laughs> a dog was a dog. I had a dog once, it was just a dog. Oh, don't say that across. <laughs> oh, I'll give, my, I'll give mine a bit of a hairy mouth. There he is. Now, that sort of hairy dog, I can't draw from the side. From the side, I have to do more a sort of sleek dog. So, from the side, the long, sleek nose like that. Oh, OK. And then an eye, like that. A nose, down there. And if you put a little line there, you have a smile. Oh, yeah. OK. And then to the bottom jaw, like that. And an ear, like this ear. It doesn't take much, does it? Just a few lines and you've got... <laughs> it's depressingly easy. <laughs> a way to draw a dog with a full body is to draw the dog's face, say, let's put some teeth in and growling dog, like that. There's a rather vicious dog. Let's have ears, quite small ears, like that. And to put him in a collar and tie, like that and put his paws in his pockets, then you don't have to bother with drawing paws and a coat. Put him in a long overcoat and you don't have to bother with those dreadful legs. That's a great tip. So a yeah, couple of you... paws sticking out of the bottom of the overcoat. So if you have a trouble drawing animal, stick him in clothes. Stick him in a long, long coat, yeah. It works with any animal. It works with a horse, a lion, anything at all. And a wagging tail is always a good idea to show that the dog's basically quite nice. What do, you, what do you think then? Have I got a, a career in children's illustration beckoning? You've cracked it. You've Yay! You've really cracked it. Yeah, I mean, the, the bottom one's fantastic. He looks so vacant, doesn't he? Right, OK. He, he could be a TV character, this guy. Right, well, my change of career starts tomorrow then. Yeah, you can animate that. Wow. Oh, thank you, Tony. <laughs> You're welcome. Story time now. So, get a wiggle on. Wiggle into your chairs. Come on, everyone in your classrooms. And listen closely, because afterwards, I'm going to want to know what Mummy Fairy's wand is called and what spell she uses in the video. Do you know a grown-up who might have magical powers? Maybe your teacher always knows where everything is. Or your cousin is really, really fast. Or perhaps your grandparents sound like they've travelled through time. This story is all about a little girl called Ella. Her mummy looks normal, but she's not because she can turn into a fairy. We're about to join Ella and her mummy as they get ready for a visit from Zoe, who's their next door neighbour. She's not very nice and Ella really wants to impress her. Let's see how they're getting on. I'm going to read it, but the story is narrated by Ella. Ella, said mummy, what's wrong? We haven't got any cupcakes, I said. We don't have any cupcakes for a tea party. Zoe said we would burn our cupcakes, I told Mummy. She said we'd have to throw them in the bin and now she'll think it's true. She said that, did she? said Mummy. And she looked cross. But then she smiled. All right, Ella, my darling. I promised you cupcakes, so we will have cupcakes. But it's too late, I said. Through the window, I could see Zoe and her mum coming up the path. Zoe was dragging her mum along. She was saying, just wait till you see their messy house. There's stuff all over the floor and they haven't got any cupcakes. Uh-oh, I think Mummy Fairy's going to need her computer wand for this one. That's better. Very quickly, Mummy Fairy stamped her feet three times clapped her hands, wiggled her bottom and said marshmallow and poof, she was a fairy. 
Mummy Fairy looked sternly at her computer wand. No nonsense now! Suddenly, the doorbell rang. Oh no, Mummy Fairy, I said. They're here already. Hold on, she called. Just coming. Then she pressed a code on her computer wand and said, cupcakery do. And at once the kitchen was filled with cupcakes. Hundreds of cupcakes. There were pink cupcakes and chocolate cupcakes and sparkly cupcakes all on plates. There were even cupcakes that said Tom and Lenka and Zoe. They were beautiful and they smelled like the yummiest cupcakes in the world. Not all Mummy Fairy's spells work, but this one certainly has. Now I've got a trick that you can use for your creative writing. Mummy Fairy's spells all have a redo at the end. So now it's your turn to create a magic word. First, write down one thing you can see in your classroom. Looks like our illustrator Marta has spotted some milk. Next, write a redo after the word. So milk becomes milk a redo. And here's the best part. Imagine what would happen if your character said this word in a story. Milkery do might make it rain chocolate milkshake, or a cow might suddenly appear. Good luck with your stories, everyone. Hope you were listening carefully. Let's see if these guys were. So, what was the name of Mummy Fairy's wand? Yeah. Computer wand. Yes. And what was? Mummy Fairy's spell. Cupcake redo. Yes! And has anybody come up with a magic word and can tell me what happens when you say it? Uh, you. Jack a dairy do. Right, what happens when you say that? It puts on your coat. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Because it's so hard putting your coat on, isn't it? Really useful to have a magic word for that. Well, let us know your magic words by tweeting at Puffin Books and using hashtag magical authors. Now, it's time to talk about what, something that's very close. <laughs> Oh no! Someone's locked in the library! Hi, I'm Summer. This is so cool. I can't believe I get to spend the whole night in this library. I work at Penguin Random House and I love my job because I get to talk about amazing books on Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and I get to talk to writers and some of your favorite YouTubers about books as well. So the book that I've chosen to escape into for my library lock-in is a Wrinkle in Time. It is the story of Meg Murray and her brother Charlie who have to travel through a wrinkle in time to find back their father. It's a dangerous journey through space and time that will take you to a different world. Maybe you could have a library lock-in sleepover at your school. Now we've got time for one more question, so we're going to crank up Wurzel again. Claire, could you push the button? Yes. <laughs> If you could write a book about any other subject, what would it be about? That's from Annabelle, who's homeschooled. That's a good question, isn't it? Well, I'd probably stick... Oh, hang on, hang on. How about Tony draws the cover whilst you talk about the book? OK. Um, OK, quick, go, go, go. I'm going to stick to dogs, but it'd be different sorts of dogs. I'd go for rescue dogs. So we'd be set in the mountains with a St Bernard who is rescuing people stuck out in extreme bits on rocks or in an avalanche. So he's a big dog and he's got a keg around his neck neck, you know, on the collar, and he's a search and rescue dog, so he sniffs them out. And I think dogs are really, really clever, and I could have a whole series of dogs that do different jobs. So you get bomb disposal dogs, you get mountain rescue dogs, you get dogs that might rescue people from the sea, dogs that can Claire swim. Claire Balding's dog, Dogs With Jobs series. Dogs With Jobs, that's exactly it. This would be part one in the series of Dogs With Jobs. There you go, I've just given you, uh, given you a title Thank there. you. Just Thank shake you. my hand and say that's for free. I get 10%, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Right, Tony, have we given you enough time to come up with something? He's on There's his lots way. of visual stuff there, mountains, well, St Bernard's, barrels go, there around There we necks. go, uh, but that's a dog on a mountain. 
I've let's have, let's have, can I have a look, Tony? Can I have a look? Can have a look. There's a dog on a mountain. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's really. <laughs> oh, he's, <laughs> he's hanging on by his paws. By his paws, yes, by his claws. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sending in all your questions. And you can find out how to send in a video on our new website coming in March. Now, we've talked about real magicians, magical mums, and the magic within. But if you can't decide which book to choose next, here's author Tom Fletcher with a plan for you. Hi everyone, hope you're enjoying the show so far and that your teachers are behaving themselves. Especially you, back there. Yes, you. Got my eye on you. Yeah. Who am I to tell you? Well, I'm lucky enough to be the author of some books. These books, actually. All of them. Wrote them all. Die for a Wimpy Kid. Me. Gangster Granny. Me. Harry Potter. All me. You're welcome. Okay, I didn't actually write those books, but I did write these ones. I love reading. I also love music. I'm in a band. I write songs, I make YouTube videos, I love sci-fi, eating ice cream. Uh, what's all that got to do with anything? Well, Smarty Pants, thinking about who you are and what you love can help you find a book that you might enjoy reading. And I'm going to give you three ideas that can help you find that magic book. Aren't you lucky? So this is my room where I write all of my stories and all of my songs and occasionally build Star Wars Lego. See, grown-ups play with toys as well. We're not that bad. I've filled this room with all the things that I love, from Christmas, to dinosaurs, to toys, to films that I love, which brings me on to idea number one. Loads of movies start off as books, like Harry Potter, or Wonder, or the BFG. So you could go to your school library and ask to borrow one of those books and see if anything changed. When I was growing up, I liked slightly spooky things like Ghostbusters and the Gremlins. And it was these things that inspired my book, The Creakers, which is about disgusting creatures that live in an icky, sticky world beneath your bed. So if you also like spooky and creepy, then you could ask your librarian for some scary book suggestions, maybe? But if you don't like scary, then that's okay. Maybe you like funny or romantic TV shows. Whatever it is, knowing what you love will help you find your next book. Another way to find something to read is to think about the music that you like and why. Maybe it's music to relax to. Or music to dance to. Yeah. And one of the things that I love most in the world is Christmas. In fact, I love it so much, I've had two Christmas-themed birthdays in July. But one of the best things about Christmas is, of course, the Christmas music. There are so many amazing Christmas songs. My book, The Christmasaurus, actually started with a song called The Christmasaurus. He's just a Christmasaurus, the only Christmasaurus. The song became a book, which became a stage show, and one day soon it'll be a film as well. So maybe a good way to start would be to look at the lyrics of your favourite pop song and try and work out what the story is that the artist is trying to tell you. Okay, here's my third idea. Hobbies. Maybe you love playing football, or baking cakes, or building Lego. Whatever it is, I bet there's someone out there who loves it too. And you'll be able to find a story in your library, your school, or your bookshop that's perfect for you. So there you have it. Find one piece of music, or a movie, or a TV show, or a hobby, or one thing that you love, and challenge a librarian, or a teacher, or your parents, or a mate to find you something to read. There are so many incredible books out there, there's definitely one for you. Who knows, you might even like one of my books. You heard Tom Fletcher. Go out there and put your teacher to the test. We're nearly at the end of the show, so a huge thank you to all our authors and illustrators and to Tony and Claire for being here in the studio. I hope all of you watching are set to find your next story, because to find magic, all you need to do is open a book. We'll be back in June for a summer spectacular. But until then, from everyone here to all of you watching in your classrooms, bye! <laughs>
just wants to be beautiful she goes I know that she knows no limit you can't keep using your father's disappearance as an excuse to act out Meg it's not coming back is it don't give up hope oh she don't see the light that's shining is that his work well, what's it about he believes that we could travel the universe instantaneously so you fall to space more likely wrinkle it you must really miss him more than anything in the universe then how about we go and find him let's go dad was right it really is possible this is my favorite planet in the entire galaxy there's a hope that's waiting for you in the dark who are you we are in search of warriors. Your father has done an extraordinary thing, but he may be in danger. Your father's alive. We believe he is, and the only one who can find him is you. You're kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? A little. I'm not. I'm not. She don't see her perfect. She don't You're going to be tested every step of the way. Have faith in who you are. I'll try. It isn't safe here. Trust nothing. I cannot leave you without my father. You should know you're beautiful just the way you are. You are stronger than I ever was.